pleasure to be joined here by Martin Freeman, who plays uh, Lester Nygaard on, thank you, good emphasis there on Fargo here, and we're on set today. Uh, tell us a little bit about the character that you play. Um, well, Lester is uh, a guy who, when we join him, has kind of been a victim of life, really. You know, life just happens to Lester, and he's on the receiving end of it. And um, he's in a loveless marriage, in a joyless job that he's not very good at. And he's about as buttoned up as you can get, Lester. He's kind of a, he's not a very relaxed person. And then by a twist of fate, he meets a character played by Billy Bob Thornton, who kind of um, opens a door in his head that says you can actually live life a different way. You don't have to be the victim all the time. You don't have to take it anymore. You can take some control of your life. And by the end of the first episode, we see the results of that, which aren't always um, healthy. Ah, but mm. an outlet, nevertheless. It is an outlet. It's, it's not necessarily legal, but it's an outlet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's pent up. He, yeah, he's got 40 years of pent up rage. All yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, an interesting character to dig your teeth into. What were your first impressions when you first read the script? Well, just that I wanted to do it. You know, it was um, the, the couple of scenes with Billy Bob's character are so compelling and really, really, uh, they just draw you in. You know, just to, the way that one character is just playing this other character and just um, completely beguiling him. Uh, the rest of the, the script was fantastic, but the, you know, given that this was the character that they were offering me, it was just too interesting not to do it. Yeah. And I knew that if that was what it was going to happen by the end of the first episode, then what the hell was the end of ten going to be like? Right. And I knew that it'd be going on a little interesting trip, Lester. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what made me sign up. It's always good writing that makes me want to do a job. Yeah. What was it like for you delving into this small community in Minnesota? It was interesting. I mean, obviously, it's, it's foreign to me. And what what was important was um, that I didn't come in and and do and and kind of do a second, third hand version of what this would be via the movie from 1996. You know, so I don't just you know it wasn't it wasn't enough just to kind of skim read it, so to speak, and just make sure you go oh yeah a lot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because over ten episodes, that's not really going to fly. You know, just people doing that, it would look like something off SNL. You know, mm -hmm. no disrespect to the movie. The movie is great. Right. I love you, Bill and Frankie. Um, but uh, but over, we don't want to do that. You know, I mean, it's it's not the same. It's not the same thing. Um, well, it has to be truthful. Has to be truthful. And yeah, and again, I, I think the movie was fucking great and it was truthful. Because I think a lot of the time, well, you can say fuck. I mean, like what? It's the guns internet. Are, guns, We're good. guns are legal. Fuck isn't. What kind of world do we want to live in? Um, yeah, you want to make it truthful. And as I think that the film was truthful. And like every stereotype is based in truth. Every single stereotype has a kernel of truth about it. And however many Minnesotans say, we don't speak like that. Well, no, you kind of do speak a bit like that. You know, there is some truth in that. But I think what we wanted to do was slightly round that off and not make it so, to the ear, so extreme. You know, th those very extreme vowel sounds, very elongated vowel sounds mm -hmm. that, of course, in the mid-90s made us all as viewers go, wow, what's that? Is that real? Are they making that up? And we see that actually, no, it is based absolutely in reality. You know, I, I did a lot of watching people on YouTube, uh, like real people, real Minnesotans, and thinking, yeah, that's, that's kind of like the movie. All <laughs> the time it is like the movie. Um, Can you give us a flavor? No. One sentence? The F word? Sentence? <laughs> they would never say the F word. They're they too polite. Say, they're too polite. No, they, I mean, they don't even say the JC words. You know, they, they would make that, you know, I think they, well, they do say cheese and rice. You know, people do say cheese and rice, you know, because it's, that's the polite version, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wouldn't ask Polite that. like Canadians. There is a similarity. There is a kind of similarity. I mean, I, I felt, again, being a foreigner, what do I know? But I kind of, being around the accents here and it's not exactly the same uh, but there are enough similarities i think cultural vowel sound wise mm -hmm. um just a kind of attitude of, of, of life that it's not a million miles away from being in calgary i don't no. think you know it's a kind of politeness and a sort of solid decency to people you know and not really not swaggering you know it's a very unswaggery place here as well as as minnesota so except for during stampede and we get our swag. Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, though you've been shooting in the dead of winter, and so what was that experience like, being in these frigid temperatures? It was pretty cold. I mean, you know, as an Englishman, I'm used to being cold, I'm used to being damp and uncomfortable in weather, but yeah, this was a different ball game. You know, a couple of weekends ago when it was with the wind chill, minus 37, I've never known anything like that. I've, right. I, you know, I went out for a walk, I thought, oh, let's go out for a walk for about 10 minutes, 
And within two minutes, I thought, you know, this was maybe a bad idea. I went and bought a balaclava. I'd never bought a balaclava before in my life. You know, j yeah, just to be like, because <laughs> you can see how your skin starts to yeah. freeze. I'd never had that frozen nostril hair thing before. No. People to protect yourself. About it. Yeah. They said, oh, your nostril hairs. I was like, do they? And you go out and think, wow, they really do. Yeah. You that is the truth. Yourself. Yeah. yeah you, you can die in this kind of weather. You could. It made me think, I mean, seriously, what the hell are homeless people doing in this? But like, I'm, I know there are lots of shelters in Calgary, and I know there are lots of places. Thank God, but it, you could die in an hour, no problem. And that yeah. was a pretty sobering thought. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, had you had any chance to participate in Canadian activities, for example, yeah. curling? I've done curling. I ended up. I was quite good at curling. I heard you were a ringer. I was quite good. Yeah. I mean, I doubt I could keep that consistency up over you know two days. Uh -huh. But beginner's luck, and I've got not a bad hand-eye coordination I'm not bad with that and judging distances and stuff but I, it was it's a weird everyone came away with a bad knee the right, day like after deep plunging yeah. yeah and also just the banging on the you know the banging on the ice even though you don't think you're doing it much you do it kind of 60 times and you've got a big <laughs> bruise on your knee you know what I mean? it's quite athletic it is and it's very skillful yeah. it's a real real skill because there were a couple of people who could really do curling uh, and mine was mine was quite good and it was as I say a bit of beginner's luck but there were people who were just consistently knowing what they were doing and I thought that takes years yeah. to get good at so yeah. that was probably the most Canadian thing I've done. Uh -huh. Team I'm, building. Yeah. yeah good. I haven't shot anything. So I'm not yeah. that Canadian. I haven't shot any sort of wide-eyed young yeah. creatures. Yeah. We don't all do that. <laughs> you have to go to Saskatchewan for that. Uh, you don't. You don't. You have <laughs> no, to look around yeah, our crew. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people who like shooting, you know, doe-eyed sweet things. Um, but I haven't done that. But I'll, I'll stick to curling. All right. right. Maybe, maybe next season. Maybe if I can combine maybe getting a tiny deer on the ice and just knocking it over with <laughs> the whatever it's called, um, it would just it would be a longer, slower death. Mm. That may sort of apply to the character that you're playing. By episode eight, yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, really quickly, what was it like working with Billy Bob Thornton? Um, in all honesty, it was great. Um, I didn't know him at all. I, I'd never met him before. Um, but that was definitely an attraction for, for doing the show. You know, the, the, the couple of scenes between he and I um, in the first episode, just to read them, I thought, and imagining him in them, I thought, well, that could be really, really good. And I'm pleased to say it was fantastic. He makes life easy. He's, you know, he's a professional, comes along, knows his lines. He's interesting to watch. You know, you you have to react to him. He's reacting as well. You know, he's not someone who just comes along and this is my performance and that's it. It, it changes. It's it's malleable. I I loved working with him. I'd love to do more of it. Genuinely, he was um, a delight. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it. Thank you. Thank you.